everyone, I'm Claire Saffitz. Welcome to my home kitchen. Today I am making a recipe inspired by the incredible beignets at Cafe Du Monde in New Orleans. These are my pillowy beignets. They are from the Stovetop Desserts chapter in What's for Dessert. They are crispy on the outside and super soft and light, but also chewy on the inside. They're just so, so delicious and really fun to make. Okay, I've only been in New Orleans one time. Harris, my husband, has, had been there several times and was like, "You have, we have to go to Cafe Du Monde and like first thing, have some beignets. They were everything I hoped they would be and more. Just so delicious, incredible texture. So I really wanted to recreate that at home. I've made a million donuts in the past. You know, like I'm very comfortable with frying at home, but I never really made this style of beignet. And it really is like its own category of fried dough. So. I did a lot of research, but of course the recipe is like quite secretive. So this is kind of my best reverse engineering of that. And they're really fun to make at home and like pretty forgiving also. So let's talk about the ingredients. It's pretty straightforward. I'm using all-purpose flour. If you're using an all-purpose flour that has like a lower protein content, you might want to use bread flour, but this is King Arthur, which has like an 11%-ish protein content. So all-purpose or bread, it would be fine either way. Then I have just a quarter cup here. This is some whole wheat flour. The recipe calls for whole wheat or rye or barley flour. This is gonna add a lot of flavor to the beignets. Granulated sugar, kosher salt, baking powder, active dry yeast, milk, two large eggs. And then for frying, I have some neutral oil. That's high smoke point. And for serving, of course, powdered sugar, essential. The beignets themselves are not that sweet, so we really generously coat them in powdered sugar, just like they do at Cafe Du Monde. Special equipment. In terms of the dough, very little. Basically just a bowl and a spatula. But for deep frying, you will need a heavy bottomed like pot with high sides. So here I'm using a Dutch oven. Before I get into the recipe, I wanna thank our friends at Made In for sponsoring this episode. And here in front of me, I have their line of beautiful enameled cast iron. Everything is hand enameled by artisans in a multi-generational factory in France. They've been making enameled cast iron since the 1920s. Every piece is so beautiful. I have their Dutch oven, skillet, and then this is a new two-quart saucepan. What I love about this line is that it can go from the stovetop and it works on induction, any heat source, to the oven, to the table. It's heat safe above 500 degrees, so they're incredibly versatile and perfect for all of your like fall braises and soups, especially getting into the winter months. But of course, I'm gonna use it today for frying our beignets. Perfect vessel for deep frying. One special feature of this line is that all the lids feature this cloud cover technology where it condenses and traps the steam and then returns all that moisture to whatever it is that you're cooking inside. So the design is just so smart plus really, really beautiful, and I love that the, it has these metal handles, so everything is oven safe. So you can check out this entire line of enamel cast iron cookware, as well as Maiden's other cookware at maidencookware.com, and there is a code below for a discount off your order, so check it out. Now I'm gonna mix the dough. This is a pretty wet dough, which is really important in achieving the final texture that we want in the beignets, which is super light but also really chewy with like big interior holes that to me is like the kind of telltale classic sign of a cafe du monde style beignet so i'm going to start by mixing my dry ingredients and i'm doing this by hand you don't need a mixer to do this but you could just combine everything in the bowl of the stand mixer and let the hook do the work so i have my all-purpose flour here then i'm adding a little bit this is whole wheat the recipe calls for rye or even barley i think that actually they use barley flour at cafe du monde this is just going to add a little bit of extra flavor to the beignets. Then sugar, about a half cup. My baking powder. This is kind of like an insurance policy. The yeast is obviously what's gonna produce the gas and give you an airy texture, but the baking powder is there just to like give it extra sort of puffing when it goes into the oil. And then this is kosher salt, two and a quarter teaspoons. It seems like a lot of salt, but without that quantity of salt, it just doesn't, it's just not seasoned enough. You really want to be able to taste the flavor of the dough. So the salt's really important. So I'm just gonna whisk all of this together. Probably this bowl is too small, but that's fine. So now I'm gonna mix my liquid ingredients. I'm gonna start by measuring out, I think it's three quarters of a cup plus two tablespoons of lukewarm water, but I'm just gonna weigh it so it's 200 grams. 
And when you're thinking about lukewarm water, just know that body temp is 98. So if it's slightly warm to the touch, it's probably around 100 degrees, and that's what you want. So it's just slightly warm to the touch. You don't want it to feel hot because you risk killing the yeast if it exceeds, you know, 115, 120 Fahrenheit. You can always use a thermometer to double check. It's too much. 200. Okay, so to this I'm going to add my AccuDry yeast. I'm using a teaspoon. AccuDry yeast is pretty reliable, but it does need to be dissolved a little bit first. You can see that the mixture is kind of cloudy because that yeast has dissolved. And now I'm going to add my milk. I have a half cup of milk that I brought to room temperature. So I'm going to mix all that together. And then two large eggs, also at room temp. So you can see we're making kind of a modified sweet dough, yeasted dough. So I'm just gonna kind of gently whisk this, break up some of those eggs. You can just do this in a medium bowl, but I just think it's kind of convenient in a measuring cup this size. And now this part's really easy. I'm just gonna make a little bit of a well in the center, meaning kind of raise up the sides of the flour. So all this liquid's gonna go in. So I'm just gonna use a spatula and I'm gonna gently incorporate everything. So at this point, I wanna get all the flour hydrated. So I'm gonna stir with the spatula, or again, the bowl scraper, until I have no more dry floury areas. And I'm doing that with the spatula instead of my hand because at this point it's gonna feel really sticky because the flour hasn't really had a chance to fully absorb that liquid. So it's easier to do this with a spatula as opposed to your hand. But once you get everything really well incorporated and make sure that there's none of there's no like pockets of dry at the very bottom. Once you have everything nice and evenly mixed, then I'm gonna switch to my hand and we're gonna knead this. It almost looks like a thick batter. It hasn't really come together into a dough yet, but that's the purpose of mixing. And by hand, this is gonna take a little while. This is gonna take maybe about 15 minutes. So if you get tired, you can just like throw, you know, a, a damp towel over it and come back to it. That's okay. You don't wanna let it sit too long because the yeast will start to kind of activate, but this part requires a little bit of patience. So I'm gonna just take, I'm gonna leave one clean hand and then use one hand for kneading. So this is what you're gonna do. At this point, it's not gonna have a lot of structure, meaning it's gonna not sort of hold together. It's not gonna be very cohesive, but you're just gonna take one hand, kind of lift it up from one side of the bowl and press it back toward the center. So you can see when I do this, it breaks really easily and it's super sticky. So at this point, you can see the lack of structure, like there's no elasticity, it just kind of breaks apart. So what I'm gonna do is just continue to work it this way until I see a couple things. One, it's gonna smooth out in texture a little bit. Two, it's going to have more elasticity and more sort of cohesion, so it's gonna hold together in one mass. And it's still gonna be really sticky, but it's just going to be less sticky than it is now. So I'm just going to continue with this kind of kneading motion with one hand and rotating the bowl with my other and I'll check back with you in like 10 minutes and we'll see how it's coming along. I will say if you do wanna just sort of like set it and forget it and leave it in the stand mixer with the hook, keep it on the lowest speed and I would check it after five minutes. It might need to go a little bit longer but I'll show you what that kind of end point looks like. It's kind of already getting to the point where it wants to stick to itself more than it wants to stick to my hand. That's good. So after about 10 minutes of kneading, this is what the dough looks like. It is still sticky, but it definitely has more of a tendency to stick to itself rather than my hands. It's become pretty elastic. It is holding its shape much, much better inside the bowl. And it has sort of pretty good cohesion. So it's really kind of staying together all in one mass. I think this is really sufficient kneading. Let me just clean off my hand really well. I'm gonna clean down the side of the bowl and then we're gonna let it rise at room temperature. So it's time to get my oil heating. I just realized I don't have a deep fat thermometer here, but I have an instant rate thermometer. So I'm gonna use that to kind of monitor the temperature. I'm using neutral oil that has a high smoke point for this. So you can use peanut, vegetable, um, I don't know, what else people use? Can you use pure lard? You can fry them in lard if you wanted to, why not? Grape seed. Grape seed avocado. is a good one. Avocado is great, but it's probably gonna be so expensive. So I have my made-in Dutch oven over on the stove and I like using it for frying because it has nice high sides and there's really, really even heating. I'm gonna pour in the oil until I get to a depth that's about a third to a halfway up the sides. 
You just don't want to go higher than that because it's just not a great idea. So you might not use all the oil that you have. You always want to leave a little bit of room when you're deep frying, like a little bit of headspace because certain, the, the more sort of moisture there is in whatever you're deep frying, the more bubbling you'll get and the more displacement you'll get as it's frying. So the oil level will rise a little bit. These beignets don't bubble that much, but just for safety, a third to halfway up the sides. So it depends on your vessel. And then pro tip, save the bottle of the empty oil bottle because after you do a couple rounds of frying, it's actually good for holding the oil once it cools and reusing, and then you can use it to throw it out when you're done. In what's for dessert, because I have a few desserts that are deep fried, I do give some really helpful tips if you're deep frying at home, and one of them is what to do with the oil once it's spent and how to know when the oil is spent. But a lot of places have like drop off where you can recycle used cooking oil. So check that out, it could, like your farmer's market might have it, but if you can't find that in your area, then you end up just throwing it out in the trash. Don't pour it down the drain. That will be very bad for your house's plumbing. So this is the dough that is beginning its rise. I wanna let it go at room temperature. Now, depending on the temperature of your home, the ambient temperature, it might take less time or more time. But after about an hour and a half, it's going to get really bubbly on the surface and have grown to be about doubled in size. I have one that I made last night and refrigerated because this dough does go into the fridge after that first rise. So I'm gonna show you what it looks like and you can kind of compare the two volumes. This one has grown in size and there's also some, I see lots of little bubbling beneath the surface so I know that it's full of that gas produced by the yeast. And importantly, this has chilled. I did let it go overnight so you can chill it anywhere between four hours and overnight. It takes four hours for it to really fully get cold. Um, and the reason we chill it is not only to give you more flexibility as far as your timeline for when you want to fry them, but also because the dough is a lot easier to handle when it's cold. So you do want to use it straight from the fridge. So this one I'll put aside will rise and then throw it in the fridge, but this one's ready to go. So we're gonna move on to the next stage, which is forming the beignets and frying. I'm gonna start my oil heating while I form these, just on like medium low. So when I was testing this recipe, one of the mistakes I kept making was not using enough flour to really pat down the dough and cut the squares, because even though it's cold, it is still really, really sticky. So you wanna be very generous in coating your work surface with flour. And it's okay because when we go to fry them, we end up kind of patting off and like shaking off a lot of the excess flour. So it says very generously flour, and I mean very generously flour. So now I'm gonna use really generously floured hands to pat this down. And I like to kind of lift it up a little bit, make sure it's not sticking. You do not have to be gentle with this and don't worry too much about popping any bubbles. You'd really just, and it, it's not gonna take a lot of force on your part to get this into the shape that you want it to be. Okay, so I have it in this sort of rough rectangular shape. And the rectangular shape is just so that I can cut beignets that are more or less square, but the shapes don't really matter. I'm not too worried about like each one having the perfect dimension. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut them into about two and a half inch squares. So I'm not even, I have my ruler to cut, I mean, I didn't even really use it. I have my ruler, so I'm at 18, 12-ish, close enough. I'm not gonna measure this. I'm just gonna go by sight. I separated them a little bit just to give me a little breathing room because the dough is so wet still that if you leave it really close together, it will wanna kind of re-adhere, but we'll separate more later. So these guys are gonna be kind of smaller. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give it a little bit more flour and now I wanna actually just kind of pull them apart a little bit on the work surface, make sure that they're not sticking to the surface nor to each other. If you're feeling like the flour is sort of caked on in places, it's not that important. We're gonna sort of give everything a little bit of a shake before we fry. And as I pull them apart, they're getting like a little bit, you know, the shapes are getting a little bit irregular, but it does not matter. I sort of like that look. So that one I recut because I got a little bit stuck to its neighbor. They're all separated, they have a little bit of room. There's plenty of flour to prevent sticking. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to cover these with a kitchen towel so they don't dry out too much. So 375, these are going to rest here and kind of go through a little bit of a short proof while that oil comes up. But it just goes through a kind of short little rest here on the bench while the oil comes up and you'll notice a little bit of puffing. Let's check in with our frying setup because it's important really for frying that you have your mise en place or just all the prep ready to go because deep frying is the kind of thing where it's like, you're not so light on your feet when you're deep frying. You're pretty much like stuck here. So you don't wanna be running all over the kitchen grabbing stuff. So I have 
have my thermometer, I just want to say that my oil's on sort of medium, medium high, and I'm right at 375, close enough, around 370. It says 366. 366. Can't lie to okay, fine. Well, let's see. 370. Okay, 369, 370. Close enough. All right. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep going. Be very conscious of the fact that when you add cold dough or cold anything or even room temperature anything to hot oil it's going to drop the temp so i like to kind of get it nice and steady and then when i start to add my dough actually crank up the heat so you're going to constantly be regulating it is easier when you have a deep fat thermometer because you can just sort of like constantly be seeing so i'll be taking the temp a lot with my thermometer here i want to point out i have a rack set over some paper towel typically i would put the paper towel in the bottom of a rimmed baking sheet and then the rack on top I don't know where any of my rim baking sheets are right now. I have a suspicion Harris has something to do with that, but I don't have that. So that'll do for now. And then I have a spider. You can use a slotted spoon, but this is just gonna be used for turning everything in the oil and also removing it from the oil. So I'm gonna start adding my beignets. Also my hood is on, so you might hear a little bit of that, but because you want good ventilation when you're deep frying. When you're doing this at home, it's best for you to be on your work surface next to the oil. I'm gonna have to, since I was here for you to see, I'm gonna have to be crossing this area, but I'm not gonna throw them in behind me like they do them at Cafe Du Monde. Can we track this? No, I'm gonna start by grabbing my beignets and I'm gonna kind of grab them one at a time. And I'm gonna do this kind of like back and forth motion to dust off some of the excess flour. But I'm not too worried about the flour because one, it does contribute to that kind of crispiness on the outside. Um, two, it's not really going to dry out the beignet because there's so much moisture in that dough anyway. The one kind of negative about lots of flour is that it will kind of um, sink down in your oil and it will, like, the oil will kind of go bad faster. You can even use a little brush if you want. So I'm going to, one by one, sort of slip these into the oil. You're going to immediately see them puff. So I'm adding the beignets sort of one at a time. It depends on sort of your frying vessel and the size and dimensions. I'm gonna add enough so that the pot is full more or less, but that they still have plenty of room to swim around. So that's really important. You want the beignets to have plenty of room and you don't wanna overwhelm the oil and then drop the temp really fast. So you can probably get at least six in here at the beginning. And they are already puffing so much. But yeah, so I've dropped some, so I'm gonna crank up the heat a little bit. So these are actually almost done, some of the first ones. As soon as the dough goes in, they puff almost immediately. So they barely even have time to sink and then rise again. So they dramatically puff, I would say. And actually they do take on color rather quickly because of that sugar that's in the dough that encourages browning. You know, I'm adding them one by one, but I'm also kind of keeping an eye on the ones that are in there so I can monitor the browning. And I love how they just get so puffy and that means that they all that air in there is expanding, plus that little bit of baking powder in there is also causing that puffing. And so I'm still right at a nice oil range. I'm in like the 360s. So I'm constantly monitoring the temp because again, I'm adding you know several portions of this cool room temp dough, and that's gonna drop the oil temp. So actually my oil is still on like a medium high because I just don't want big dramatic temperature fluctuations. I just want consistent frying. So these cook fast. It's really just like about two minutes or so in the oil for these, for the beignets per batch. So even though we have a lot of beignets to fry, they go really fast. Now, when you're dropping anything into the oil, you don't actually want to drop from a pie because then you're going to splash hot oil. So I like to actually go kind of right down. I'm obviously not touching the oil to be very explicit about that. You want to just be very deliberate about how you're adding your um, dough. And if you feel concerned about it, you can put it in your spider and then drop it in that way. They smell so good. So it's important with beignets, you wanna eat them hot or as like soon out of the fryer as possible. If you don't want this many beignets, which is a couple dozen, um, you could always make a half recipe, but I think it's nice to have this many. So now the final step, which is so, so important, is to dust them with a lot of powdered sugar. I mean like cake them on. The dough itself is not very sweet at all. They are so light for their size. It's just incredible. So I know that they're gonna have like tons of air pockets in there and they have that like perfectly, like look at how pillowy they are. So not only are they pillowy, but then you get these kind of little irregular corners and that part's crispy. So it's just the most incredible textural experience to eat them. 
So I'm gonna just dust some of them with powdered sugar. And you do wanna do the powdered sugar right before serving because eventually it will start to absorb a little bit of like the oil that's on the surface of the beignet and you don't get that really beautiful like snow effect. Try not to do it where you have a giraffe like I do. Getting powdered sugar a little bit all over the place. I think a glass of iced coffee or like a cappuccino if you have an espresso machine at home or just a straight espresso or hot, whatever it is, hot coffee, this is the time. So I wanna show you what the interior looks like because that is, to me, the best part. This, this really singles out this recipe, I think, as being really special is what the interior looks like. So I wanna show you. You can see that it has like huge air pockets and that the dough itself is still, like there's still tons of moisture in there. You get it crispy, you get it chewy, you get light. And also I wanna say not even the least bit greasy. These really fry so well. They don't absorb a ton of oil, especially with that high temp of 375. So it's really good. Now don't exhale as you eat it. It's important. Mm. Oh my God, so chewy. But then it like dissolves because you're kind of eating air. I think even just that little quarter cup of whole wheat or rye or barley flour really does so much to the flavor. And that overnight rest in the fridge also really helps to enhance the flavor. It's not just like blank white flour. <laughs> I should have got powdered sugar to the back of my throat. Mm. If you're not careful, you could really eat a lot of these in one sitting. Also exceptionally dunkable if you have coffee. And you said these are better than Cafe Du Monde? No, Cafe Du Monde, definitely a singular culinary experience, but if you're craving that style of beignet at home, or if you just wanna try making a type of donut or fried dough that you've never made before, these are so fun. And also I think a great way to kind of get a little bit more comfortable with deep frying at home. And now I have like two dozen beignets that we're gonna eat. It really feels like I just ate nothing. That's how light it is. So, you know, proceed with caution. But anyway, so much fun. I love bringing you more recipes from What's For Dessert, so more episodes to come. And I wanna thank our sponsors at Made In, the makers of beautiful enamel cast iron cookware and so much more. So head on over to madeincookware.com. Again, there is a code below, so check it out. And thank you so much for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe.